first glance, Thomas Was Alone is a simple shape-based puzzle platformer, with several different blocks, which move in their own distinctive way in order to help you, the player, solve each puzzle and get to the next level. What makes Thomas Was Alone more than a two-dimensional world with two-dimensional shapes is the story. With the help of Danny Wallace and his excellent voice, this plain, boring world comes to life. The shapes the player controls suddenly have names and personalities. They think, feel, and choose. Unlike a game such as Pac-Man, which has no obvious story, the narration in Thomas Was Alone allows for the player to become immersed in the world that ha has been created, allowing him to merge with the characters he's playing and feel as if the events of the story are really happening to him. Such an immersion creates an emotional connection to the characters, which makes the events of the story that much more powerful. Instead of motivation coming from the joy of completing the puzzle, motivation instead comes from the plight of the characters, giving the player determination to finish the game where others may quit. Danny Wallace does a brilliant job of breathing life into the basic shapes of Thomas Was Alone and turning them into what we can actually call characters. There's Thomas, a red rectangle, who's the quiet observer, proud of his pretty good jumping skills and his pretty good falling skills. He's determined to solve the mystery of his strange world. Chris, the orange square, can barely jump, and this makes him angry, self-conscious, and prone to jealousy. John is a tall, skinny, yellow rectangle, and he can jump very high. His skills give him a bit of an ego, but he's determined to get the little guys to the end. Claire is a big blue square, and she jumps about the same height as Chris, but she has a superpower. She can float on the otherwise deadly white liquid and ferry others across. She has a hero complex. Laura is a long, red, horizontal rectangle, and her jumps are the shortest of the group. Instead, Laura is able to increase the jump height of those who bounce on her, which immediately makes Chris fall in love with her, but worries Laura. She's afraid of being used and abandoned, like her last group did. James, revealed much later in the game, is a green version of Thomas, and seems to be the exact opposite. Rather than falling down, he falls up. He also enjoys being alone. Everything else, including their jump height, is the same. Finally, there's Purple Sarah, who is the smallest rectangle of the roster. But she has the ability to jump higher than everyone else, since she is capable of double jumping. Sarah has a bit of an ego as well, but rather than thinking herself better like John, she thinks she rules everyone as a queen. Though these are the seven main characters for the majority of the story, several others are revealed after the climax, when the main seven sacrifice themselves to free the rest of the AIs. The end of the game shows a series of grayscale shapes which are able to absorb the abilities of the original seven by passing through webs of their color. While these characters are also given names and personalities, they are not as complex as the originals, and are around for such a short time that an attachment is barely formed before the end of the game. As well as breathing life into the large roster of characters in Thomas Was Alone, Wallace succeeds in providing the player with subtle gameplay hints through the inner monologues of each character. Here are a few examples of those instances. Alright! Fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you! Claire needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think! What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to... what's the word? Jump. It worked! Thomas had solved the great inverted fall mystery. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another mental note. Four, water. Not good to be avoided. 
On several occasions, Wallace even does something called breaking the fourth wall, in which he comments directly on the medium which is being used to convey the story, by referring to the game mechanics. Here are some examples of breaking the fourth wall. As the water began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No, too obvious. Thomas had a new theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Thomas Was Alone takes narration to another level of excellence by adding a secondary point of view into the game. At the beginning of each chapter, text is overlaid on the screen to give the players some backstory. Through this silent narration, the player learns how the characters came to be self-aware, how they got their special abilities, and what happened in the outside world as a result. These comments serve to not only bolster the realism of the game by providing what appear to be real names and job titles, but also help to frame the story. Without the secondary commentary, the player would not necessarily know that the game takes place inside a computer, and that the characters are merely seg segments of code which have become AI. Furthermore, the goal of the game would not be clear, as the player would not know that is, it is the goal of the main roster to make all the other segments of code AI as well, and for those others to reach the outside world. Though Thomas Was Alone is a simple puzzle platformer without much zeal, the narrator's huge contribution shows how much depth any game can be given with a bit of a story. A world can be woven where one previously did not exist. Not only that, but the secondary narration explains what the first person perspective of the narrator cannot, which only betters the already brilliant story. The final scene of the game serves as a way of bringing the game to life, in a sense. The AI, our characters in this digital game, have succeeded in reaching the outside world just as the narration allows simple shapes to become characters, and a digital game to be so immersive that it feels real.